Now I'm going to talk about how to have our hearts healed. This is still the seven point of joyful victory. Because in order to be able to serve God, in order to have a free life, our hearts in the past have to be healed. If it's not healed, people who are hurt all the time, other things that happen will bring up the memory. And when people are not healed, they also have anger toward those people who hurt him or her, and they will not be free. It's hard for them to live in the love of God. So we need to, it's something we need to uh, face ourselves and help people to be healed. Okay? Every person has been hurt. One time or another. Some people take the hurts more internally. Some people can handle the hurts most of it. But some people cannot handle you know, many of the hurts. Some people are affected greatly by the hurts. And the hurts will show in our subconscious mind. Now the subconscious mind, other than the dream, how does it show? It will show in how people react to us. For instance, when we talk with people, sometimes we are not offending them. We're not saying anything against them. We just say something, you know, normal conversation and this person has been hurt by other people for instance a woman who has been hurt by men before and then when a pastor can't try to help her and she thought about the man who hurt her before and she might have anger toward the pastor so any of these hurt feelings not heal the person would be burdened and they would react with um, they're too sensitive to anything people say. Like I said, the, the, the student, when I said, next time when you see a chair up here, please put it down. I was not saying about anyone. I was just saying about generally, if you see a chair, please take it down. And then she thought I was, you know, I was accusing her and she felt hurt. That she need, that's why she need to defend herself. And then so in the future when she get married, when her husband talked to her, a lot of things she said, sometimes she might not say it, she just feel angry. You're accusing me, you're saying all this against me. So her feeling need to be healed. And if it's not healed, we cannot be free. So we, you can ask yourself, this, is your heart totally free and joyful? If you cannot be joyful, if your burden, that means some pressure people give you or you, we ourselves give us. The hurts can come from ourselves or other people. We ourselves give us pressure. And this pressure stays in our heart. And then we feel unhappy and burdened. So all these things in the past, and we can think of the people who have hurt us. When we think about them, do we feel free? Or do we feel we can forgive them, we can have compassion on them, we want to bless them, or we still have anger? Or for instance, our present relationship, our husband and wife and children, when they're not listening to us, when they are hurting us, when they are disobeying, when they are doing things that hurt us, make us feel unhappy, and then when we are affected by them, then we will have anger. Now, when people are hurt, it can show up in different ways. It can show up in depression. It can show up in anger. We feel angry. It can show up in frustration. We get frustrated easily. Now, you notice some people get frustrated easily. When things don't go right, they feel very unhappy because other people have also failed them, so they feel very unhappy. So all this need to be healed. And sometimes one by one, each person that has hurt us, we need to be set free from that. We need to be set free from that. And so in our prayer, we can ask God, who are some of these people who have hurt us? And am I set free, am I healed? 
Now let me tell you, forgiveness has different levels. For instance, I was in a traditional church. I was a pastor. I was also a seminary professor. And I was responsible for a department to authorize pastors to be, people to be ordained as pastors. If they pass exams, they, then they can be pastors and can be ordained. And I have this position. But then there were people against me. There were people who did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And they tried to kick me out. And also in a, in a denomination that I was functioning as a pastor, there was someone who want to get me out. And this person also, when she talked to me before, she showed unpleasant expression on her face. When she talked to me before, she showed unpleasant ex expression. And when I thought about these people, that in the past, I had unpleasant feelings. And it took me a number of times when I pray, I thought about these people to take care of all these hurt feelings in the past. And the hurt feel feelings in the present too. Even people who are nice to us sometimes hurt us. So we have to be aware of how these people hurt us and then take care of each one of this. And uh, the way how I got healing was I go back to each of these persons, what they did to me, and I think about this person and I think about how these people have been hurt by other people. How they are miserable. Their life is miserable. And then I have compassion on them and forgive them and bless them. But inside me, I need to be healed. And inside me, I keep declaring, Jesus loves me. What these people do doesn't matter. And I talk to myself as a young person. I talk to myself, you have been hurt. You felt unhappy, but one day you became a person, a pastor who has blessed many people. You become an important person. So you can let go of all these hurts. You have been healed. So I took myself back to my childhood until I can totally feel free about these people. That I keep forgiving them and, and blessing them and once in a while, I think of some people, think of their faces. I still feel hurt. And then I have to take care of that so that I'm totally free. That I can say, I rejoice in the Lord. If you can rejoice and relax, I'm, I can rejoice, I can be happy, then you are healed more and more and more. And then in your dreams, it's all good dreams. It's all, uh, you know, relaxed dreams pleasant dreams, positive dreams, then your heart is more and more free. Whenever you are under pressure and then you have bad dreams, that means some hurts are still there. Now how can we clear, clear all these hurts? There are different ways, different passages that can help us. First this passage, Romans 15 verse 3. Romans 15 verse 3. For even Christ did not please himself, as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Now listen again. The reproaches, that means the accusation. The accusation of those who reproach you fell onto Jesus Christ. So when people hurt us, they're actually hurting Jesus. They are attacking us, they are actually attacking Jesus. But Jesus is all free, all without burdens. You know, there are many people who died for a period of time and then they came back. And then they share what happened when they died. They said when they died, the soul left the body. When the soul left the body, they felt very free. Never in their whole lifetime that they were so free. They were totally joyful, very free. And then they went to heaven. Why were they so free? Because all the sinful nature in this life is gone when we die. 
When we die, when we believe in Jesus, there is no more worry, no more burdens, no more hurt feelings. We are totally free. And so when people died, they feel very free and they very totally, you know, no burdens and totally free and joyful. And then they were overwhelmed by the love of God. These people said they went to Jesus and saw Jesus and the love of Jesus came to them like a wave. Like a wave came to them. And there was one man called Ian McCormick. He when he shared about this experience, when he was in the, probably in the 20s, he shared about experience maybe when he was 50 years old. And when he shared about it, he said, nobody can be ready to see Jesus. Because what he meant was, the love was so strong, there is no love like that. And on earth, we cannot experience such a great love. And when he talked about that, tears came to his eyes. When he shared that, tears came to his eyes. Because he remembered how when Jesus talked to him, the love of God came to him and overwhelmed him. And he felt so loved, so accepted. There is no such love on earth. All our hearts went to Jesus. And Jesus is totally free. Because Jesus is God, He is pure. He has no burden, no hurts, nothing negative. He's totally free. So when we see Jesus one day, we'll be totally free also. Can you imagine that? I hope you can imagine that. When you can imagine that, you can enter that freedom now. Gradually, we cannot enter there totally. But when you can understand God's freedom, His joy, then you can visualize, visualize. One day when we go to heaven, we'll be free like that. And now we can be free like that too. So now, if every day you say, I can be free like Jesus, I got joy like a river, I got joy like a river, I got joy like a river in my soul. I got joy peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. Hallelujah. I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. Ha ha ha. I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul, hallelujah. So we can learn every day, Jesus is very, very free. Jesus took all our hurts, all our pains, but when he went to Jesus, it just disappeared. Because Jesus would not take this hurt, but it all fell onto Jesus. And He is totally free. So we can imagine ourselves. On earth, the closest thing to, to that is uh, birds. Have you watched how birds fly and play? And they always chirping. <laughs> They're all very happy. <laughs> Birds, you know, like animals, other animals, land animals, generally they don't make sound so freely, right? Once in a while they make the sound. But birds, I noticed that, birds just keep talking, and even chicken. When you see chicks, little ones, always talking. And it's very free. But when people cannot talk, we the burdens inside doesn't come out. So we visualize the freedom of God in heaven, that He has no burden. Jesus said what? In Matthew 11, 28 and 29, for I am gentle and meek in my heart, in my soul, that I'm gentle and meek. 
that Jesus is gentle and meek. Imagine, you see Jesus one day. You know someone saw, saw Jesus in heaven? He said this. When Jesus appeared, the atmosphere totally changed. Even in heaven, the atmosphere totally changed because Jesus was filled with joy and freedom. So when Jesus appeared, everyone has more freedom and joy. Do you want that kind of joy? Yes. Now if you find any hindrance to that, we need to go back to the experience and believe that that hurt has gone unto Jesus. That hurt has gone unto Jesus. And also Psalm 118 verse 6, which we have talked about. Psalm 118 verse 6. The Lord is for me. I'm not afraid. If the Lord helps me, I'm not afraid. And what can people do to me? So what can people do to me? So every day we believe, what can people do to me? Very often we think, you know, like the husband or wife or children, they can make my life miserable. Many people think that. They can make my life miserable. They can make me unhappy. They can take away my money. They can make my marriage a problem. So we all think like that. But when we think like that, the problems stay in our hearts. One belief I have is, no one can take away the blessings of God because Psalm 139 verse 16 to 17. Psalm 139 verse 16 to 17. For all the days in our life before one of them came to be were written in your book. O oh Lord, how precious are your grace. How wonderful, how precious is his love that his love is so great. So all the days in my life is written in heaven, in the book of life. So one day, when you see Jesus, look at me everyone, tap the person next to you. Tap the person next to you. Okay, when you go to heaven one day, Jesus will not say, well, I had a wonderful plan for you, but your husband stop it. Your husband stopped your plan, so I didn't do any. I couldn't do anything. Or well, your child stopped your plan, so I couldn't do anything. And I'm sorry. Did Jesus have to say that? Does Jesus have to say that? No. I'm sorry. I I let this person ruin your life. Can anyone ruin our life? No. No. If you don't let it. But you say he hurt me outside. He yelled at me. He even hurt me physically. Then. He's hurting me. The point is, whether you take it or not. The point is, whether you take the garbage or, or not. If you take the garbage, when someone yells at you, when your children disobey you, when your husband or wife say something unpleasant to you, you take it, then the hurt will go inside and stay in you. Unless you take care of it. Unless you take it out. If not, it will stay inside you. And some people have the heart stay for a long time. And there are different ways we let it stay in our heart. There are many people, they will say, oh, my wife had yelled at me all these years. My husband has done all this to my, all these years. And my members in the church has heard me. Many people talk to me like that. Many people came to me for help. And then they said, oh, people in my church has hurt, helped me, has hurt me. Oh, my pastor has hurt me. And they remember this. And they remember all these hurts. And they don't take care of it. They don't let it go. When they don't let it go, what will happen? They are pierced to the hearts. They are hurts to the hearts. So one way to continue to hurt us is when we remember, and also when we hate these people, when we dislike these people, when we are angry with them, then the anger stays in us, and then we stay hurt. That is painful. <laughs> you know, when I'm teaching, I very often apply the teaching to myself. And when I apply the teaching to myself, Jesus has taken my hurts. All my hurts has gone unto Him. 
And all the people that yell at me, all the hearts of God unto them. And no one can change the plan of God. I don't have to remember this. When I remember it, I'll bless the person. I'll bless him. I'll, I'll forgive him. I'll bless him. I'll let go. And God can pay, pay me back. Actually, God has paid me back many, many times over. God has paid me back many, tam many times over. Let me tell you, one time, I bought a recorder from someone. And I made up my mind in a wrong way. I thought that recorder can be helpful to me. And I paid a high price for it. But it ended up that I did not use that recorder. It was not useful to me. It was a wrong decision. And then for many years when I thought about that, I said, oh, I said to myself, I wasted that money. I wasted the money I bought the recorded, then I did not use it all. And I accused myself, you made a mistake, you made a mistake. Now, no one hurts me, it's myself. The memory of it hurts me. But years later, when I thought about all the blessings of God He has given me, He has given me much more than that, the cost of the recorder. He has paid me back many times over. And then I said to myself, He has paid me back already. It doesn't matter that I lost some money. It doesn't matter. I can let go. You know, our heart. Let me ask you, who accused you more? Who accused you the most? Us. We accuse us most. Who hurt us most? It's us. Because we hold on to this hurt. We remember this hurt. We hate these people. And what happened is, when we have all these hurts, it's painful. Let me ask you, do you feel any pain in your heart now? Do you think of some hurts, and then your heart still feel pressure and unhappy? Do you still have some of these hurts now? Do you still feel some pressure in your heart now? Let me ask you, think about some people that have hurt you now. Think of the face. When you think of the face, do you feel unhappy? Do you feel unhappy? Do you, when you think about the people who hurt you now, do you feel unhappy? If you feel unhappy, you're still affected. So you want to bless them and have compassion on them because all the reproaches, all the accusation has fallen onto Jesus. So it doesn't matter because Jesus pays me back and He heals me. What blocks us from being healed? What blocks us from being joyful all the time? Because we have imprisoned these people in our heart. We have kept these people in our heart. We kept these people in our heart. We have imprisoned them in our heart that we don't want to let go. But we say, Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter because Jesus pays me back. When I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be paid back to me. And when I can forgive them and bless them, I will be set free. Let me ask you, have you ever totally set free someone, set someone free, that you hated them, and then you begin to pray, and you bless them and forgive them, and then the more you think about them, and then even when you look at them, you can smile. Now at this point, can you think of this person and smile at that person? Now some people here might have problems smiling. But that's also something that we need healing. Let me tell you, when I was young, I hardly laughed. When I was young, I hardly laughed. Why? Because when I was young, it was all yelling and beating. Even though I didn't do anything wrong. That I was beaten for the faults of my father. When my father stole the money and gambled and lost the money, I was beaten for that. 
So in my childhood, I did not laugh. I did not know what laughing is. <laughs> it's always being hurt and hatred. Huh? What is sadness? Then sadness. Sadness? No, not sadness. It's anger and not much feeling. Not a sadness. When I was a child, I was not sad. But I just don't laugh. I can play. I can play. I can go out and I have fun. But what I mean is I don't laugh. I won't be so happy. I remember when I was in middle school, I was in a harmonica band. Do you know harmonica? You blow with the mouth, a musical instrument. I was in a harmonica band. And my school is a very famous school in Hong Kong. And we always got number one. And one time, the church told us and another team, two teams. The church said, one of the team is champion, one of them is a runner-up, and then you come up. And then we'll announce who is, the, who is the champion. And then we stood there, our team, and then their team. And then the judge announced, the champion is the team of Queen's College. My school is called Queen's College. It's Queen's College. And then all my schoolmates standing up there, jump up, ha, 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 ha. And I just stood there and watched them. I just stood there and watched them. I cannot laugh. What? I cannot laugh. I just. I'm happy, but I won't show it. Why the cost? Why the cost? That's why from childhood, because I just didn't laugh. Because from childhood, it's always beating, shouting, yelling, blaming. You've done all the wrong. Actually, I'm the best boy in this in the home, but I always took the punishment and everything. And so it's a lot of law in the home. Accusation. Now let me ask you, are you some way like that? Are you some way in some way like that? Can you really laugh? Ha ha ha. Ha 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 different now. I'm totally different from my childhood. It was not after I was a Christian. It was after I experienced the Holy Spirit. Now I did experience some joy, but I was not filled with the joy of the Lord. It was after I experienced the Holy Spirit and then I experienced the love and then the joy. I really want to keep the, keep the joy. But at the day I experienced the joy, I keep Stay loving God and the joy stay in me. And then on the way home in the bus, I keep keeping the joy. <laughs> but I don't laugh it out. And I want to keep that. And every day at home, every day. Oh, Jesus loving me. <laughs> so that's the presence of God and the joy of the Lord. At the same time, I take care of each person that hurts me. Basically, it's like this. Say it with me. God loves me. God, loves me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. No one can take away God's plan. Even when they hurt my body, they cannot hurt my soul. I can let go. All the accusation of these people fell onto Jesus. So I don't have to take the accusation. I can relax. I can enjoy God. I can go high up into the plan of God. I'm very precious. So all the hearts, I can let go. Now let me ask you one thing. If someone stole one Liberia dollar from you, will you cry now? No. No, because you know that's a very little money. Uh -huh. But if you were a child, you have one Liberian dollar, 
and someone stole from you, you would cry, right? Yeah. But can you let that go when you were a child and someone stole that money from you? Can you let that go and say, I have more than one Liberian dollar now, so it doesn't matter if I lost that. If I lost that in the past, it doesn't matter. Can you say that to yourself? It doesn't matter. When people took this money from me, can you say that? It doesn't matter. When people took this money from me, God will pay me back. And it doesn't matter. When these people yell at me, I can let go and be healed by Jesus. I can have compassion on them and pray for them and bless them and forgive them. And then I can let go and rejoice in the Lord. So basically, two ways. First way, connection with God, the joy of the Lord. Second, let go of all the hurt and forgive. And then, gradually, you'll be totally healed. Now, how can you tell when someone is still hurting and someone is healed? How can you tell? Many people cannot laugh, cannot smile. Can you smile at me now? Can you smile at the person next to you? <laughs> now, some people may find it hard to smile. Can you really be rejoicing from your heart? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Now, if you, if you can really rejoice, that means you're partly healed. And can you be saying, I'm happy I'm, I'm me. I'm happy I'm me. I'm happy I'm not someone else. I'm happy God has given me these blessings. Be happy about ourselves. Because many people are not happy about themselves because they have been hurt. All these hurts from the past make them feel unhappy about themselves. And so they cannot laugh. And many people lose feelings. Many people cannot laugh, cannot cry, no more feelings. But when you are healed, you can feel again. I have different people told me they have lost their feelings. They cannot laugh. They cannot cry anymore. But you can say, you can stop with this. When you're drinking water, ha ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Can you say with me? Ha ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I can enjoy water. Now relax yourself. Take a deep breath. I can enjoy relaxation. I can enjoy a deep breath. I can enjoy a deep breath. Enjoyment is also will bring healing also. So we let go of these people and then at the same time we enjoy, then more then we are more and more healed. Hallelujah. And then Isaiah chapter 61, which we read before. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed with me of the Holy Spirit. And He has sent me to preach the good news to the poor. And He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, and to comfort all who mourn, and the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So, Jesus' salvation is not just for Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. Isaiah, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. Jesus' salvation is not just for forgiveness and eternal life. It's also salvation from hurt feelings, from all the hurts. So that we can be free, so that we can be joyful. Okay, let us name some reason why some people cannot be healed. Some reasons why people cannot be healed. Number one reason. Now, accepting God's love is not just saying, yes, I accept God's love. It's letting God's love really sink in the heart. I'm loved by God. God loves me. I'm precious in the sight of God. I'm important in the sight of God. He's loving me right now. He's looking at me and smiling. Can you really sincerely say this? That God is looking at me and smiling. Now, 
let me tell you, if you have burdens, for instance, burden of sin, you will not be able to say this. If you have the burdens of sins, then you say, God doesn't like me. So, when we ask God to forgive our sins and then trust in Jesus, then we can be set free from guilt feelings and then we can say, God is loving me. So the first reason is, they can't believe in God's love. Second, they remember Yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah, Number two. Okay. They remember actively. They remember the hurts. Remember their hurts actively. What does it mean? Actively. They keep thinking about it. Or maybe you should say, think about. Don't don't say remember. Think about. Think about their hurts repeatedly. Think about the hurts repeatedly. So they keep thinking about the hurts. And number three, they hate and don't forgive the people who hurt them. Okay, number four, they enlarge their hurts. Enlarge means what? Now it's true that they are hurts, but then they will say, wow, this, take away all my money. Take away my family life. It makes my life miserable. I can never be a normal person again. So they enlarge the problem. And number five, continue to talk or gossip about these people. When they keep talking about these people, they keep talking. They keep talking negatively about these people. Or accusing. They keep accusing. Keep accusing the people. Okay, another point, number six. Do not appreciate God's forgiveness. Okay, so let us look at this six now and ask ourselves. Do we really accept God's love and say, this is so wonderful, I have God's love, it's so wonderful, I can enjoy God's love? And the number two is, do not appreciate God's forgiveness. He has forgiven many of our sins. So, can we believe that God has really forgiven us so much, so many sins, so I want to thank God for that. Enlarge their hurts and loss, what they have lost. So they keep thinking about what they have lost. So, let me ask you, so first, can we really accept God's love that I'm very special? And then, Number two, do we appreciate God's forgiveness? He forgives us so much. Not, cannot accept or like and like oneself. Because there are many people who cannot accept themselves. They say, I'm no good. I have no hope. I have no value. And they cannot like themselves, okay? So let us look at this and let's see if this is true of us. So do we appreciate the forgiveness of God? It's so great He has forgiven us. If one day when we go to heaven and we see hell, then we say, thank God. I don't have to be in hell. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. And then number three, when people hate and cannot forgive those who hurt them, they keep hating the hatred will hurt them more and more. They hate and don't forgive the people who hurt them. And then number five, they enlarge the hurts and loss. They will look at the hurts and the loss and say, wow, I've lost so much. I've lost so much, I'm so unhappy. And then number six, 
They keep talking, keep accusing, keep accusing these people. So they keep accusing and don't forgive. Do not accept and like oneself. Okay? Now, we try to turn this to, to positive, okay? 